So I will be sharing some of my experiences uh, in terms of uh, learning from industry 4.0 and what exactly is digital transformation from a perspective. And I'll also share some thoughts on, uh, you know, what actually it takes if you are going to implement industry 4.0 or digital transformation, right? What are the things that we would need to consider while designing and developing these systems is I'll share some of my thoughts on that, right? So, and wearing different, you know, uh, di wearing different hats, you know, as an engineering leader, how do I see industry 4.0? As an engineer, how do I see uh, industry 4.0? You know, I'll be uh, talking about some of those things. And then finally, uh, I will talk about how an organization, right? What kind of solutions MathWorks do offer when you're looking at industry 4.0 and digital transformation, right? So first thing, when I started, right? So thinking about uh, digital transformation industry 4.0, one thought that came to my mind is okay this is this is going to be you know uh, something a system would look something like this when the word smart comes into my mind you know typically a uh, few few images you know just run through my mind it could be a smart robo something like this or an you know, autonomous car or it could be altogether a, a drone right so a drone which has some intelligence and which can act like a system right then i thought okay instead of you know having my own perceptions okay let me go and ask right so then obviously like many of you right so i just went to google and then asked okay what is this industry 4.0 and what is this all about right digital transformation and 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 what the industries are trying to do here right and then uh, what what uh, google told me is right so a couple of sites in the google told me gave me two keywords after i spent some time understanding the industrial revolution one two three four and then I finally got two keywords, right? So one is cyber physical transformation, right? That means there is some transformation that industry is trying to digest and adopt, which would lead to digital convergence in the ecosystem. As some of the previous speakers, you know, identified and gave some uh, thoughts on what actually this ecosystem and then how do we integrate, you know, multiple players involved in this ecosystem with this digital transformation, right? But this didn't clarify, you know, all the questions that I had then i started wearing okay as an engineering leader if i see what is in it for me in this right so why should i care something called industry 4.0 right then then again it's it's a lot of text and so on but i would like to highlight a couple of things here right so if you are seeing this whole thing as a as a owner or a leader of this industry right so basically two uh, a couple of uh, highlights here it will actually help us to manage and optimize manufacturing processes and if we can draw the line all the way back to design, it's a bigger opportunity to actually transform the whole scenario. And with enough data and insights that are available that would come to us from the assets, if I can call them as smart assets, and then what kind of uh, decisions that we can make based out of tons of data that would emerge from these assets, right? And then the second way of looking at this is what it means for engineers, right? So why do engineers care for this, right? What, ex what kind of opportunities industry 4.0 or digital transformation gives to engineers, right? So in a way, this is this is like, you know, the complete, uh, uh, I, I don't say complete, but, but almost full list of technologies that are involved in this, starting from the simulations, right? So developing the models and doing the system level simulations and then I with various IoT uh, technologies and having sensors placed, collect the data with and stream them onto your OTR IT infrastructure and then process that data there, right? But it's not going to be as simple as this, learning this technology and getting onto the field, right? So it, it comes with its own challenges here, right? So what are what are a couple of challenges, right? So one is how do we manage as, as the systems are getting more and more complex with a lot of software getting onto it, right? So how do we manage these systems throughout the life cycle, right? St starting from capturing the system requirements, implementation, doing V and V, deploying into the field, you know, these assets, and then maintaining these assets in the in the factory environment, right? So how do we manage the complexity involved in these systems? And what are the associated processes, right? So that would help us to optimize these things, right? The, the entire uh, uh, system here, right? And then third thing is invariably there is a push, right? So from the industry and from the customers. So sample size one. So there is there is kind of customization that people are asking for. 
And but when we just take one step back and in aerodef industry is this kind of customization possible, right? Then then it is something like actually you know one size doesn't fit all, right? So stay tuned for some more minutes. I'll 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 uh, you know walk you through what exactly that means and what kind of uh, precautions that we need to take care. But to address right, so some of the challenges that we discussed, and for the sake of simplicity, I broadly classify these challenges right into two categories. One is related to complexity of the system, and second is related to data handling. Right? And then later I will show you where exactly these things fit in industry 4.4.0 ecosystem in terms of uh, the manufacturing processes. Right? So now let's start with the complexity. Right? So first question here, right? So how do we handle complexity of these systems involved here? Right? Say uh, considering the, the picture that you're seeing on your screen, a, a, a typical or standard software or system development life cycle, right? So if a change that comes to us, right? So once the systems are deployed and now a change coming to us, right? So starting with the system requirements, how flexible our existing design methodology is to, to absorb that change and then propagate it all the way to the subsystems teams and implement that change. And once again, take it back to the systems team and analyze whether that is implemented right or not, right? And are we able to establish thread all through this process, right? And continuing that, right? So, how is this connected to the systems that are deployed in the field, right? So, is the agility or flexibility that is built into our methodology can it be extended all the way to the field? And are we able to bring back some of those insights back to the development team in a way to improve the performance of our, the design process of the system, right? So, now considering this, I will show you some of the steps that that uh, you know as an organization, MathWorks supports are what we have observed based on uh, our experience with some of the global large OEMs, right? So there are a couple of steps how people do simplify this whole process, right? So the first thing is starting with system modeling, right? So design the plants, design the controllers, and make use of the library blocks that are available either in Simulink, Simscape, right? Or, 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 or various uh, related toolboxes that, that we basically offer. So design your whole plant, design the complete system, including all the uh, uh, entities. And if you have CAD drawings, you know, import those CAD drawings, and then you can you will be able to do uh, quick simulations incorporating your CAD drawings into 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 the loop here, right? And if you already have a system that is defined, and you will be able to understand what kind of behavior the system is going to give, right? So this is kind of like reverse engineering, I would say. Now, once you are done with the complete system design, the next step, next step would be you know doing the desktop simulation, right? So whatever the functionality that you are built in, plus whatever your existing functionality is there, combine the whole thing and then do the simulations. And of course, you are, you, you are expected to do the uh, V and V aspects there, right? But most important point here, right? So which would lead us towards uh, transformation or industry 4.0. Whatever you are developing on your desktop, it's not going to be closer to you know uh, your the performance on the hardware. There is going to be gap, right? The question is, can we simulate some of those aspects in the simulation world, right? So, so that our our designs are pretty closer to the hardware uh, results, right? That's where something like virtual commissioning comes into picture, right? So, so whatever designs that you have done, so uh, you know, so uh, create all those scenario scenarios and and try to virtually you know commission all the assets that you have created, and then see how these systems are behaving. Uh, in this case, again, just to as a bottom line, you are still in the simulation world, right? We haven't gone to the hardware yet. As a natural next step to move much closer to the hardware, we we deploy the whole thing in the hardware, right? Using hardware in the loop kind of simulations, right? And then uh, put put the plant in the hardware, and then still run the controller uh, from your software, and then make sure the systems are working, right? And then after that, once we are happy with the, all the results, then we generate the exes and then deploy into the hardware. Right? And then see how these systems are working. Right? So this is one way to handle the complexities of the system, right? The complexity associated with the system, but this only solves half of the puzzle. The other half related to the industry 4.0 is how do we deal with this data, right? So that's where I think uh, some of the uh, previous speakers, you know, uh, shared a couple of examples. I really like those examples related to you know the predictive maintenance aspect. Dr. Satish Reddy in his inaugural talk talked about AI, right? So the significance of AI, right? So all those things, you know, originate from how do you know how do we capture and how do we analyze this data, right? 
so as and today if you see uh, you know in in the world the maturity of the industry we have tons of data that's available in case if you don't have data we we can actually you know synthesize that data using various tools uh, including you know matlab and associated products we can generate that data and with the availability of existing powerful algorithms that are available we should be able to you know get insights from this data right so that's where uh, using this data right so we can uh, develop uh, the concepts of digital twin right so where where you can actually get the field data and train your digital models right so to tune those models and then you will be able to reproduce some of the errors that you see in the field right so you'll be able to introduce those errors in your digital models and then you will be able to see how to how to control those uh, errors and of course always uh, you know onboarding uh, new people is also an important factor right so this this is one side of the coin right so so far what i was trying to uh, uh, talk here is what you know what what are different challenges associated with industry 4.0 but when we actually move one step towards implementation where exactly this is going you know this will leave right so what are all the different phases involved in dealing with complexities of industry 4.0 right so from our perspective there are four major uh, phases or four major uh, blocks in the ecosystem or in the architecture of industry 4.0 i would put them this way starting with the smart assets that we deploy you know in the field or in the manufacturing you know on the on the floor and these smart assets right so you will do the design development v and v and all those things you know for the, for the uh, creation of for the soft to define the behavioral aspects of these smart assets and sometimes considering the processing ability of these smart assets all the processing you will not be able to do on the asset alone so you would like to dispose some part of the processing onto a different device that's what here i'm calling it as edge system so edge system would be sitting pretty closer to your asset right so the computational abilities between smart assets and edge system could be distributed or sometimes you may want to do the complete processing only in the edge system or are on the smart asset right based on what problem you are trying to solve right what's the business case for you and now once this processing is done and then we would like to upload this data onto ot infrastructure operational technology often your ot infrastructure could be on premises for example let me take one simple example of an eleva elevator we closely worked with schindler right uh, well known uh, for their elevator uh, products right so what uh, they have done in this example is so the ot infrastructure resides in the same building which means from the edge system they upload the data into ot infrastructure uh, either using you know they may have their own servers or it could also be a cloud but when you are looking at thousands of these kind of buildings all over the world then they bring the data to one central system upload onto the cloud and calling it as it system information technology system right so how do we see these things when we look at from factory viewpoint right this is how i would like to you know simply uh, differentiate these things in terms of speed versus scope right uh, the, the significance of this data when you are trying to control a smart asset you would right we need to control it in real time right so the the decision should happen then and there right so it's going to be very hard real time control right so as you move from left to right so uh, when you move towards it systems you would be capturing that data for multiple days multiple weeks and then after gathering enough data you would like to look for some patterns and then push back some changes all the way back to smart assets this is where the initial part i was trying to say right if you towards in the it systems if you, if you are looking for some patterns of you if you want to push some change in the design methodology of smart systems right our design existing design methodology should be agile enough to capture that change quickly right and then as you move from left to right on the, on the picture here the importance or significance of the data would actually increase right so then how the world is attempting you know to to implement different phases involved in industry 4.0 so i would like to uh, take a lot of you know some of our uh, third party uh, uh, you know uh, partners as well here so the first two categories smart assets and edge systems lot to do with the development and once you are done with the development based on your target hardware you will generate the code either in c cpp or hdl and so on accordingly you will, you will select the right platform for you right and and then from there when you are planning to stream the data into either ot or it systems you would be using some streaming services 
either uh, Kafka or, 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 or the equivalence event hub, right? So you're using one of the streaming services. And from there, you will upload the data all the way into cloud using either your own private cloud or, or maybe using you know, some of the uh, uh, well-known cloud systems like Amazon uh, or, or Microsoft, right? Then where does actually, you know, we can help you in this process, right? Looking into this ecosystem, what is our role where MathWorks can actually really help you, right? And it's not new to MathWorks, right? So uh, we have uh, strong solutions across this ecosystem from left to right here, right? I will try to highlight some of the things here. Talking about the first two segments here, right? Uh, this is widely used and well adapted uh, in the industry, uh, starting with the model, using uh, model as a source of truth, doing the code generation based on your target hardware, and then deploying onto the hardware, right? And then establishing different interface protocols between multiple systems, right? And as you move slowly towards right off this, right? So we we actually interface with all the stream processing. So we have a couple of products. So if you're interested, please do get in uh, touch with us. We would you know, be happy to walk you through some of those solutions. But the bottom line here, right? So what's the point that I'm trying to convey? So assuming you are doing the development uh, in, in the world that I just mentioned, you should be able to carry that design, right? And export that data into, into different systems being in the same environment, right? So to handle, to enable that seamless integration, right? That's where the value proposition of the solutions that I just mentioned would kick in, right? So uh, using the same workflow, uh, using MATLAB production server to deploy onto your production hardware, and using MATLAB parallel server to speed up your computations as and when you're actually uh, pulling tons of data, right? TBs of data, right? So uh, I, I would like to show you a couple of examples, not necessarily coming from aerospace and defense industry, but I thought I would pull different examples from multiple industries so that you get real sense of how the world is actually adapting industry 4.0, right? This example is actually coming from mining organization in Australia. Again, you know, all the examples that I'm, I'm showing here, uh, we closely worked with all these organizations, right? What these guys have done, uh, as usual, just I men as I mentioned, using model-based design, MATLAB and Simulink, they have done the complete, uh, you know, uh, the design and development and used Jenkins for continuous integration and with MATLAB production server deployed onto the field and, uh, and what they have done, for OT, right, operational technology, they have kept hardware on premises, and for uh, information technology, they have used Microsoft Azure, of course, along with the you know, respective databases here. And for the customers, they enabled the Power BI reports, right? This is one such example. And in the second example, as I was telling you in the beginning with Schindler, right? So pretty similar, right? Again, a combination of multiple technologies, multiple tool suites, right? But 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 uh, MATLAB and Symbolink was actually helping them to set up the entire uh, uh, framework here. Another example from Atlas, uh, well-known company for the design of compressors here. The framework is pretty similar. If you if you look at the screen here, right, using model-based design and then various uh, uh, things involved here. But what I would like to highlight here is you know end of the day what they have achieved here. They with the, with that framework they were able to connect 120 thousand machines worldwide and as on today if you see they're actually gathering data from these many machines worldwide and pulling this data into their information technology system and then analyzing the data and looking for uh, uh, you know how to how to make business decisions out of the data insights one more example so far you know um, uh, as, as as Dr. Dr. Satish Reddy identified in his early talk, right? So bringing in edu is very important for us in this ecosystem, at least in this latest technologies, right? So this is uh, one of uh, our collaboration with IIT Delhi. Uh, of course, there are many other players in this. Uh, so IIT Delhi is actually setting up a lab facility for smart manufacturing FSM, right? And we are closely collaborating with IIT Delhi uh, with Dr. Sunil Jha there. And, uh, you know, I have provided the link here. If you're further interested, go through that link and you can get more insights on exactly what, what is happening here, right? So how they are trying to come up with this technology demonstrator project. And then let's let's take one example from Aero. Uh, this is coming from Lockheed Martin, how they have actually leveraged the whole digital transformation. So uh, this is actually coming from one of their uh, base. So how they have used the digital transformation techniques to improve the fleet uh, analytics, 
So they have number of aircrafts in the base and they have taken multiple variables, including the availability of, 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 of the uh, equipment, right? Availability of the pilots, availability of the system, considering various factors, they, they were able to come up with an algorithm to, to figure out or to, to improve the performance of the fleet there, right? And it is implemented and they're given the solution, right? So uh, with that, uh, I would stop here. So as a summary, if you see, right? So uh, industry 4.0 can be seen different by different people, right? And based on my learning, my study, my understanding, uh, one size doesn't fit for all, right? So if you are trying to implement industry 4.0 in your organization, please be clear about what is the problem that you are trying to solve, right? Are you going to take all the way to information technology and are you trying to solve a bigger problem? Or are you trying to, you know, bring in some kind of uh, uh, transformation on your production floor, right? So based on that, the, the stringency, the complexity of this problem could actually vary, right? So with that, I would stop here. Uh, once again, I sincerely thank Aeronautical Society of India uh, for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Satish, for the interesting talk uh, you have covered within the short period, very specifically covering industry 4.0 technology, covering systems requirements, functionality, architecture, design, etc., model-based engineering design, then finally helping the Lockheed Martin for your software development. Thank you very much. Once again, now 